Okay, so if you are studying algebra, you need to understand that something like this, uh, 4 divided by the square root of 3, this is not allowed, okay? And you need to know how to fix this in order to uh, do well in algebra because if you left your answer like this, uh, let's say you, you were solving an equation or you're whatever the case might be, your teacher will take uh, points off and then you will end up having one of these, a sad face, and it's not... Uh, you could actually have uh, done the problem correctly, but you left it in the wrong form. We're not allowed to leave things like this uh, in this form. I'm going to explain to you why and how to fix it so we can turn these little sad faces into ecstatic happy faces so you can get all those points on your quiz and test. And, uh, of course, I'm going to get to this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following uh, following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have all the main uh, courses uh, from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, shortly, but I also have many, many other courses, especially in the area of test uh, preparation. So if you're studying for the um, SAT, ACT, GED, high set task, uh, maybe the CLEP exam, AccuBlazer, Alex, uh, teacher certification exam like the Praxis, uh, nursing uh, school entrance exam, there's a ton of ex exams out there that people have to take. And uh, on those exams, is significant um, um, math sections are on there. And if you don't do well on the math, you don't do well on the exam. So if you're in that situation and you need help uh, reviewing mathematics, um, just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. I should have what you're studying for. If I do not, please drop me a line and my contact form, and I'll get back to you uh, with some guidance. Now, I also work with independent learners like homeschoolers. I've been working with homeschoolers for 15 plus years. I have a great homeschool learning system, uh, so uh, please check that out if you are uh, homeschooling. And then obviously, uh, I help those of you that are struggling in your current math courses. So um, if you're serious, about improving in mathematics or learning mathematics, then you need to do the following. One thing I cannot do for you, you must do for yourself, is take great math notes. So over decades of teaching math mathematics, it's apparent to me that this is the secret to great, uh, excellent uh, grades in math, okay? Note-taking. Now, some of you are like, no, nah, not really. Well, believe me, I have more experience than you unless you are a math teacher that has taught for 40 years plus. Listen, I'm telling you, note-taking is, is, is critical, okay? So those students who take great notes almost always do excellent in their courses. And then uh, the reverse is true. Those people that are like me, students way back in the 1980s, that was a, such a cool decade. Um, and believe me, life was still pretty good even without the Internet. Uh, believe it or not, we used to use these things called pay phones. Uh, you know, you would put like a little dime or a quarter into it and you hit these buttons and then you would actually be able to speak to people. It was pretty crazy, right? Uh, I mean, this is like old school technology. Matter of fact, I don't even know if you see pay phones around anymore, but uh, despite the internet, we still survived and we had a good time. And uh, for me, I know I had such a good time that I was not paying attention in class. And when the teacher was looking at me and... Um, I would just pretend that I was taking notes. I would write a bunch of scribble scratch, and then they would look away. And then I would be wonder why I would get a C- minus in my grades. Uh, because, listen, you know, I wasn't doing the work. All right? Note-taking is work. It requires effort. Uh, but it is the main activity that you can do to help keep you highly focused, hyper-focused, uh, because there's too much information, especially in courses like algebra. You've got to focus. All right? You've got to write the information down, and that's work. And you have to be consistent. You can't skip days because you might miss critical information, right? All right, so improving your note-taking, uh, and uh, most of you can stand improvement. But in the meantime, you still need something to study from, so I offer detailed comprehensive math notes uh, to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can uh, find the uh, links to those notes in the description of this uh, video. All right, let's get into why this is not good, this part of the problem is not good, and how to fix it. Not difficult. Uh, but something you absolutely need to know, understand in algebra. Okay, so let's look at this uh, 4 divided by the square root of 3. What's the big deal? Well, uh, let's take a look at this. So 4, uh, that's an example 
of a rational number. It's also a whole number, an integer, but everyone gets, we got a good fill for four. If I said, hey, uh, we got four slices of pizza and we want to divide that by two, uh, two people, there's two people, right? Or let's actually use four people. Uh, we got our little pizza right here. We have four slices and we have four people. Uh, four divided by four is one. So each person's gonna get one slice, right? Totally makes sense. Now, let's take a look at this. This is a division problem, right? So we have four divided by the square root of three. Well, the square root of three happens to be something called an irrational number. An irrational number, that's different than a rational number. How so? Well, let's go into our calculator and say, well, square root of three, what exactly are you? And you would start getting this decimal, 1.732058075, da, 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 on and on and on and on and on, okay? Now, even uh, most people's calculators, it would just stop like right here, okay? You would just see this in your window, and you might round it to 1.73, whatever the case might be. But the square root of 3, if you had a calculator, okay, with an infinitely wide win uh, <laughs> little window there, then we can see the entire value of square root of 3 because this decimal keeps going to infinity. And if you look at it, it doesn't repeat. There's no repeating pattern, and it doesn't stop. So it's impossible for us to know this entire value. That's the deal with irrational numbers, okay? We can't express them as fractions of uh, whole numbers or integers, so we call this irrational. But this is a good um, uh, way to explain it, okay, that this uh, value here goes on and on and on. So let's go back to kind of like our pizza problem, right? Yeah, I'm going to say, okay, take four and let's divide it by this number that goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Uh, well, what's the actual answer? Well, it's conceptually, it's difficult because this number goes, it continues to go on and on. Like if you, if you give me 1.73, that stops. But if I just stop right there, 1.73, well, that's really not the whole value of square root of three. I'm cutting off all this other stuff. So for uh, this reason, okay, we cannot divide by an irrational number. So we're not saying, we have to write this differently. We can't say, let's take a number, a rational number, and divide it by an irrational number. We can't have this in mathematics. It just doesn't, it's not logical, okay? So we got to fix this. And uh, we, to fix this is something called rationalizing. It's not difficult at all. So let's fix this uh, problem uh, right here. And uh, here it is, right? So we have four um, uh, divided by square root of three. Again, uh, this is an irrational number, but let's make sure that we understand if we have four uh, divided by the square root of nine, this is a different situation because I can actually find the square root of nine. This is equal to four, uh, the square root of nine is three or positive negative three. So this is okay, all right? So, you know, you're like, well, here, this one, uh, I have a square root of 9 here. That's not what we're talking about because the square root of 9 I can find, right? That's 3, right? That, this is a different type of situation. We're talking about irrational numbers like this. So how can I fix this up? Well, it's actually pretty easy. And uh, the technique or the little step is called rationalizing. Uh, hopefully I didn't misspell that. Rationalize. We're going to rationalize. Uh, this radical, right? And it's not difficult at all. Okay, let me ask you real quick. Um, if I take any number and I multiply by one, what is the answer? Any number at all. Pick any number in the universe, multiply by one. Well, it's just the number. So you can hopefully agree with me that we take any number, we multiply by one, we get back to the same number, right? Okay, I'm pretty sure we agree on that. Now, why do I uh, state that? Well, we're going to multiply to fix this situation up, we're going to take our our uh, problem here, 4 divided by the square root of 3, and we're going to divide it by a 1, or sorry, multiply it by 1, but the one that we're going to be using is going to be a pretty fancy 1. It's going to be a pretty cool 1, all right? Now, uh, let's go back to this concept. If I take any number, I don't care what it is, let's say it's 120, and I divide it by itself, what is the answer? It's 1, right? Anything... Uh, divided by itself is one, including the square root of three divided by the square root of three, that is also one, okay? Now, uh, this one that we want is gonna be kind of a fancy number. I'm kind of giving you an explanation here. You'll remember the steps more directly, but I'm explaining why we do what we do 
to uh, fix this up. Okay, so the one that I want is square root of three divided by the square root of three. That's the same thing as one. All right, so let's take our number, okay, our situation, four divided by square root of three. Let's multiply it by one. Now, this one doesn't quite look like one, but it is one, okay? Remember, the square root of three divided by square root of three is one, and now we can fix this thing up. Now, how do you multiply fractions? If I have one half times three fifths, remember, you multiply the numerators and the respective denominators, so that's three over 10. So here, uh, I have a, a fraction, so I'm gonna multiply across, okay? So four times the square root of three is four times the square root of three, or we write it like this. And then the square root of three times the square root of three, all right? Uh, square root of three times the square root of three, when we're multiplying square roots, this is actually, uh, we could put one big square root like this, so that's the square root of, uh, of three times three, which is the square root of nine, which is equal to three, okay? And we're gonna put our little three right there, so the square root of three times the square root of three is three. Of course, there could be a little positive and negative sign associated, but let's not worry about that for now. And here is our answer. And let's take a look at what we just did. We went from dividing, okay, by an irrational number. Now we got a nice whole number down in the denominator, and we now have our irrational up in our irrational number up in uh, the numerator. This is okay, all right. Matter of fact, this is great. And if you were to do this on your little algebra uh, quiz, you would have a happy face, an A plus, and a 100%, and your teacher would be very happy. Okay, but. I would say so many uh, students, maybe like 80% of students would give me this as their final answer, four divided by square root of three. And then of course I gotta take points off and then it's, uh, you know, we go from this into, you know, this uh, sad face, you know. Oftentimes it's like, you know, like this as well, because people are saying, what are you talking about? I did everything right. Well, no, you did not, okay? Uh, remember, you have to do this. This is not optional. Okay, you cannot leave your answers uh, with a radical and irrational number. So if you have like five over the square root of seven, we got to fix it up. So let's just finish up real quick on fixing this guy up. Let's multiply right by our fancy one. In this case, it'd be square root of seven over the square root of seven. Okay, pretty easy. It's not difficult to rationalize. You need to show this. So, uh, square root of seven times square root of seven is seven, and this would be five times the square root of seven and we are done. You see how uh, easy that is? Uh, but what I like to do when I'm teaching mathematics is to explain why we're doing this so you remember this, okay? That's nothing more than a fancy one. We're not breaking the problem, okay? We're just taking this, multiply by one, and we're just making it look different, okay? But this is a lot better than this. Okay, so uh, if this video helped you out in some way, if you're like, oh, okay, I got it, you know, uh, let's make sure that you get uh, these happy faces on your quizzes and exam. Well, uh, again, if I'm helping out and if this video helped you out, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's my passion, my mission to uh, teach math in a clear and understandable way. So please uh, take advantage of all the videos that I've done, uh, which is like over a thousand on my channel. Basic to advanced mathematics, uh, those are there for you. And if you like my teaching style, you know, I make those uh, for you, to help you out. But if you want my best math help, uh, you'll, you'll definitely find that in my math help program. This is all my best work. It's taking me literally years and years and years uh, to construct. So, um, but with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.